I'm working on an isometric museum management game inspired by some of the first video games I ever played. About a year ago, I released a building demo to get an idea for how the game might play. A lot of the feedback I received contained suggestions for improving how players interact with the game. I think many of these ideas will be fantastic. However, due to the limited input system that the demo used, it's impossible to make these changes. So I've been spending some time creating a new input system from the ground up. How's it going everybody? I'm Lewis, also known as Skeffles, and welcome to the ninth devlog for my museum management game. The plan for the input system is simple. Monogame, the framework I use, supports a variety of different input devices, ranging from keyboard, mouse, touchscreens, and controllers. I don't need all of these right now, so I'm going to focus on keyboard and mouse. However, I'd love for the engine to one day support everything, so I'll keep that in mind when designing the system. I think the best way to approach this is with a layered strategy. Each device has a set of basic inputs which can be used to create intermediate actions. Those actions can then be combined to create more advanced behaviours. For example, a mouse has buttons which can be up or down, and it has a position. These inputs can be used to track if the mouse has been clicked, and if the mouse has moved. These can then be combined into a click and drag behaviour. I want to go through how all this works, so leave the video a like and let's get into it. I began by looking at keyboard input. Keys are essentially buttons, so everything that works with them will work with devices with buttons, such as controllers or a mouse. Keys have two raw states, up and down, so how do we create basic input around this? If we introduce a two-frame buffer, one for storing the current state and one for the previous, we can detect additional information. If the key is down, but was previously up, then it's just been pressed. If the key is up, but was previously down, then it's just been released. If the key is down and was previously down, then it's been kept down. And if the key is up and was previously up, then it's been kept up. These four basic inputs are essentially what I've used in all my previous games, including the museum building demo. So how do we build on this to create intermediate actions such as double clicking? Initially, I looked into extending the two-frame buffer to hold all input states for the last second. This allowed the system to detect what actions have happened within the last second. However, detecting actions in such a large buffer proved trickier than I expected, and it was a waste of memory. This led me to research how operating systems handle input. Often, time is used to track how long an input lasts, and compared against triggers to work out which actions should take place based on the current scenario. For example, say we want to distinguish between a click and a double click. We can introduce a time since pressed variable. Of course, when the mouse is pressed, the timer is reset, and every frame after, the timer increases. When the mouse is pressed again, the timer is compared against an operating system constant called double click time. If the timer is within the time, then it's a double click, otherwise it's just a single click. With this approach, the four basic inputs from before gain significantly more context, which can be used for working out clicking and double clicking like in the example, but also for other actions such as timing how long an input lasts. Moving on to mouse input. Like I mentioned before, mouse buttons follow the same logic as keys, so what do we have left? Well, there's the scroll wheel and there's the position. Let's start with scrolling. The mouse state contains a raw scroll value. If you scroll up, then the value increases, and if you scroll down, then it decreases, but you can't tell which has happened in a single frame. So if we introduce a two-frame buffer again, we can look at the current scroll value and the previous scroll value to detect the scroll direction. If the value is greater than the previous value, then it's been scrolled up. If the value is less than the previous value, then it's been scrolled down. And if the value is the same as the previous value, then it's not been scrolled. You can use timers, like we did with keys, to create intermediate actions, such as constantly scrolling in one direction, or zigzagging between the two. However, I'm yet to be convinced if this is actually useful, as I can't think of any examples that use this type of scrolling. If you can, then let me know in the comments below, as I'd love to find out if it's actually going to be useful. 
Moving on to mouse position. Similar to scrolling, a mouse state contains a position, which is made up of an X and Y value. However, you can't tell anything beyond that. If we introduce a two frame buffer, we can look at the current position and the previous position to detect additional information. If the value is the same as the previous value, then it has not moved. And if the value is different from the previous value, then it has moved. Once again, you can use timers to create intermediate actions, such as when a position moves. Is it a quick flick or a prolonged drag? With this in place, I can capture all mouse and keyboard inputs, and I think it's flexible enough to introduce other input devices, such as touchscreens and controllers in the future. I'm now looking to build up an input eventing system around all of this, with a view to recreate the demo from last year, but with all the suggested improvements. As the input on the demo is refined, it should hopefully get to a point where it's locked in and I can move on to more game specific features, which I want to create a roadmap for soon. I hope you've enjoyed watching this devlog for my museum management game and its input system. Leave the video a like to let me know you did and subscribe for more great game development content like this devlog explaining how to rotate an isometric world. Thanks for watching, goodbye.